think we are all here uh, at this time, Kyle. So um, whenever you would like to uh, start the meeting, you may. Okay. Sorry, I'll just pull up the agenda here. We'll go ahead and call the meeting of the Mead Public Finance uh, Committee, excuse me, the Mead Public Library Finance Committee to order at 12 p.m. Uh, <clears throat> we do have a quorum, and so we'll move on to item 1.2, approval of the minutes. I'm seeking a motion to approve the minutes from April 23rd of 2020. Um, this is Maeve. I move approval. So moved. I'll second. And moved and seconded. Uh, all of them. Aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. On to item number two, uh, two one, review and possible action on payment of current expenditures, including payroll and special revenues. Uh, and so I will turn this over to here. So actually, and I'll delegate this to uh, Debbie D'Amico is online as well. I sent out with comments, everything appears to be normal in the payables. Um, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary, so... Any questions for Debbie on the, the gifts or the accounts payable? Okay. Hearing none, uh, seeking a motion to approve the uh, payment of current expenditures, including payroll and, and special revenues. This is Mary Lynn Summers. And moved, is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item 2.2, two, uh, we've got a state uh, budget. Uh, so I will turn that over to Merritt and Debbie. Okay, the only thing on that is where I stated in my email is that we still do not have the city levy posted. So that is not on the financials as of this week. Okay. And then we're still we're still set to approve the budget next week or later this week at the full board, correct? Um actually that's just a discussion. We don't really do any action on the budget approval okay. each month or each meeting, so. Very good. Any other questions for Garrett or Debbie? Okay. Uh, with that, we can move on to item number two, three, discussion and possible action uh, on late fees way for patrons under the age of 18. So before the pandemic, we had had a discussion as a board um, on a couple of occasions about the opportunity to waive or remove late fees, uh, at least starting with patrons under the age of 18. Um, obviously COVID has changed the landscape a bit for us financially and really for everybody. And so we would wanna circle back on this. Um, Maeve or, or Garrett, is, do one of you wanna talk at all on this particular topic? Yeah, Kyle, I'll start. Um, this is Garrett. So in January, I believe at the January meeting, I handed out two reports from 2019 regarding um, the amount of fines that we had charged out to patrons as well as how much had been collected. And those two documents are reattached to board docs to this item. And uh, it looks like for youth materials, last year we received about a little over $7,300. And so uh, Maeve did ask us to put this uh, back on the agenda for finance as well as the full trustee board meeting on Thursday. And so I'll kind of open it up from there on the discussion. So uh, this is Maeve. Um, I had asked that uh, this be put on the agenda because uh, as Garrett rightfully pointed out, we were beginning the process of considering um, 
perhaps waiving fees for uh, youth and possibly also adults, but uh, then COVID-19 uh, pandemic happened and you know, good things uh, kind of got put on hold. Um, and just in light of uh, the personal research that I've done and in talking to librarians and other patrons of the library, um, having a fee structure really does seem to inhibit uh, some of our citizens from even borrowing books because of the fear of a fee, that they're not able to manage a fee. And, they're, and uh, in light of everything that is uh, more challenging this year and the fact that most likely the school district is going to have some uh, challenges with um, daily schedules and getting resources to our youth, um, I really think it's in the best interest of our library and our mission if at the very least we waive fees for youth, that we really need to be a place in which they can access materials, uh, utilize them, and then if they are uh, a little bit late in returning them, there is no fee. Uh, but I don't want the fear of a fee uh, to result in our youth not borrowing from our resources, because I think in this, this next year, uh, our youth need the support of the community more than ever. So uh, that's why I asked Garrett to uh, put this back on the agenda for today. Thank you, Maeve. Um, Garrett, I guess I have a quick question for you, or maybe this is a good question for Debbie. Um, so I would, I would say I'm inclined as well to support removing those fees for those under 18. Uh, the one thing I just want to make sure that we consider is here, what does that financial impact look like in the library? So we're, there's about $7,800, I believe, that we're talking about would be pulled from the budget in anticipated revenue from those fees. Um, I imagine that that's going to be down this year anyways because we had essentially a full quarter um, of no activity or you know limited ability for people to to check out materials so that would inhibit any any fees being incurred there um, but what does that look like if we, we pull that out what type of expenditures what offsetting cuts are going to be put in place um, as we know that revenue is already a, a tight conversation I don't have the answer to that yet, Kyle. I think we're going to have to discuss that in admin about what sort of budget to present. But yeah, the 7300 it could come from materials. It could come from a savings elsewhere. Um, I guess we have to figure out where that, where that is if you guys decide to pass that. It's not a huge amount in the grand scheme of things when you look at um, the total amount of the budget. But it's certainly always a struggle to find anything here and there because we've been so tight for so many years. And then we did get the revenues from um, Monarch, and we're up slightly on the adjacent county, so that might help offset that a little bit. So, okay. Uh, I guess I'll put out to the other committee members. Any other thoughts, Sherry or ML, on um, waiving this and essentially incurring that expense, if you will, uh, for our kids? Um, I think it's a really good idea, um, and um, I, I wholeheartedly support it. Obviously, we need to look at it after it's been in place for some period of time to see what the impact is. And then, uh, you know, and I, I have to say that the materials we got quite a while ago, I haven't looked at in a long time. Do libraries, and let's look at it in a non-pandemic kind of situation, what do libraries who waive late fees do, if anything, with respect to educating patrons about responsibility to the library, to other people, and that sort of thing? Do we, is there, is there stuff in that material? I, and I'm sorry, I, I just don't remember. Well, as far as the materials, we're still going to charge a lost fee if it's not brought back within a certain period of time. I will say on the pos positive that the libraries that have done this have actually seen a, a large increase in the use of the materials when they're not worried about fines. Okay. And I can just speak from um, some of the local uh, school libraries. Uh, the librarians have noticed that um, 
families who, um, you know, they don't even have a late fee, but there is such a fear of a fee being enacted if their child even brings home a book from the school library. So it really seems to, to just the practice of having a fee structure for youth collections has a ripple effect that seems to even be impacting how families are utilizing resources at our local schools. Uh, and I know that I've heard from uh, local teachers that have said that families uh, do not let their children take books out of the Mead Public Library because there is a fear of the fee. And it's just really um, trying to change that dynamic is, is kind of my hope for the fee that we do end up with having more families utilizing the library in a way that they never have before. So it seems that it just kind of on its own leads to improvement and any kind of, I'll call it consciousness raising about, um, you know, the fact that when you don't return a book, it means other people don't get it, you know, yada, yada. It really isn't probably that necessary. That's what I think I'm hearing, which is good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. All right. Great. The, the other thing that I would just like to, to add, which is so interesting to me, is that you know many times uh, libraries have talked about how the whole fee structure builds in responsibility, you know, in the citizen, like this this pact that they have with the community. But you know, if we look at our mission and our vision, that's not that's not our aim in our community, right? So uh, we really want to instead educate and to en entertain and inspire. And the only way we can truly do that is if more people utilize our materials and not feel somehow um, threatened by a fee structure. So. Very good. So are you looking for a motion to approve eliminating overdue fines or fees from materials through the end of the year, through in perpetuity, just ending it, period? I mean, I think I think we could make the motion permanent, but maybe there's a, a period of time that we come back and look at this again and just to make sure it's working. I mean, if you wanted to do uh, like a... I think we'll probably do that anyway. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. Yeah. So, so I make that motion then. I move to eliminate the overdue fees for juvenile materials. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Move and seconded. Uh, a, a quick parliamentary inquiry, um, Maven uh, and Garrett. We're looking to approve it at the committee level and then submit that recommendation to the board for approval, or is this fully controlled within the finance committee? Right. It's a, it's a recommendation to the boards uh, for the board to consider this um, issue on Thursday, and then the full board will have a discussion and then vote. Very good. All right, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, item 24, discussion of possible action, meet public library investment funds. And I think maybe you're the right person to turn this over to, is that correct? Actually, I'm gonna turn this right over to Garrett. <laughs> We're having. We're just clicking on buttons here. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, I thought I would start off, Kyle, and just set the context. Uh, some of you that haven't been on the board as long may not have all the background in it, but um, this started off really in 1969. Ethel Everhart Estate uh, gave the library around $37,000. Uh, by 1974, the Everhart Estate had given 133,000. Overall, and then several other estates in this in the city began to give significant amounts to the library as well. Um, this money was all controlled by the library trustees, and it was invested uh, mainly toward through the Wisconsin State Investment Board, also known as SWIB. Um, and the fund on the library budget, part of the city budget, was called. It was the line was the 850, um, and so this became known as the 850 fund. Um, which we've also called the Mead Fund now, but just so that you know the terminology. Um, 
However, then in 1989, the library formed a foundation in order to provide financial support and various investment vehicles that were not av available to the trustees or to the city at that point. Um, so at the, a after 1989, most of the large bequests were directed to the foundation rather than the library. Um, the 850 continued to collect interest and grow that way, but it wasn't gaining uh, a lot in the principal from large bequests at that point. And so it was sort of like, I, I think of it as an orphaned account. It was still uh, robust and stuff due to the markets, but we weren't actively um, uh, putting money in it, into it. Um, in 2014, a little after I had started, there were several trustee members that were interested in uh, looking at that particular account um, because it wasn't making very much interest. We had over a million dollars in the SWIB account, but it was invested very conservatively. At that point, we were making 0.05% uh, interest. And so on a million dollars, we were getting virtually nothing. And so we started uh, discussing whether we should um, move the money, create an agreement with the, the library's foundation that they could invest the money and that the trustees would still control it. That was sort of, uh, there was a lot of discussion at that time with the trustees about um, whether to just donate it to the foundation or whether to just have them manage the money in one of their investment vehicles. And it was decided at that time, um, there was some strong, uh, some trustees with very strong financial backgrounds and interests in following that money. And so it was decided to compromise at that point. They would um, just send the money over to the foundation for investment purposes. Um, so they did move it and it was a great move. It's, it, the interest has grown significantly. We've usually spend out the interest um, and it's, it's, been, it's done a lot better financially than what we were doing before. Um, uh, the disbursements are still controlled by the trustees. And now as we look at this in 2020, uh, you know, there's, there's turnovers in all levels of our boards and so on. And we continually have to describe this process to new board members as well as to the council members and, and we'll have a new city administrator soon and so on. So um, I just brought this up to Maeve that perhaps this is a time we should be talking about uh, do we want to make that final um, movement to just uh, take what, what is in actually the, um, currently the state statutes. If you notice on this particular agenda item, I did attach the, um, the statute that shows the, not only the powers of the library board, but also that um, if a bequest, or I'm gonna read part of it, if the bequest or endowment is made to a public library, the board may choose to transfer the gift, bequest, or endowment, or its proceeds, and then there's several options within this. This is on the back page. Um, they could transfer this to um, um, an organization, 501c3, whose purpose is to provide financial and material support to the public library or to a community foundation. So you guys have the right to move this money if you so choose, and it's just, I thought I would open it up for discussion on whether that's something we would want to do at this point. So, so uh this is Maeve, and uh, I, I had also asked uh, Garrett to put this onto the finance agenda for you, Kyle. So uh, thank you <laughs> for letting me uh, have this on the agenda. Um, I think the, the biggest challenge is that um, this is money that has been privately donated to the library. Uh, it's, it does not involve any tax dollars. And what becomes a challenge over time is when th these monies are seen on the spreadsheet of the library, there is a, an, a, a, an unfortunate uh, confusion that seems to occur with uh, new people that either join the Common Council or perhaps new people that join the city administration where they don't quite understand that that is not um, city money and it's not uh, and, and it's private money that was donated for the library. So in talking with Garrett, we were thinking that since already the foundation has the authority to invest and really wisely you know, monitor our funds, that it might be the appropriate time to take the next step and have a lawyer draw up a, a, a simple one-page uh, document uh, doing a final transference of these um, of this fund to the foundation uh, that would allow for the trustees to still have uh, some of, uh, authority into directing um, how those funds could be expended and uh, 
that is something that I have uh, broached already with the foundation, uh, and uh, they are uh, uh, most interested, and they are willing to assist us in any ways to you know, support the library. But uh, as all of you are well aware that with the difficult financial times that municipalities have had over the years, uh, everyone is carefully looking at the spreadsheets, as they should. Everyone is carefully analyzing how tax dollars are being spent, and that's all appropriate. It just makes it challenging when the library has uh, been given this wonderful gift uh, many, many years ago uh, to, to enhance uh, library programming, and uh, we want to be able to ensure that those wishes of those uh, initial uh, wonderful gifts are being followed through. And we think by uh, uh, having the foundation take uh, further, uh, uh, take a further step of uh, responsibility for it is in the best interest of our library and truly the best interest of our city so they have a greater understanding of the budget that the library has to work with every year. I would add one thing to that as well, and so Debbie spends, obviously, as our accountant, a lot of time uh, dealing with these issues, and so right now she has to make decisions on some of these, you know, you know, we have to, I guess we have to, there's a lot more work to be done than what there needs to be right now, I think, just having uh, the monies in different places and so on. Having it all in one place means it would just be easier to do her job, quite honestly. I asked um, Debbie or, or, or maybe Garrett, um, what is in the 850 line just dollar wise? Currently, there's about, there's going to be about a million four after I pay for the, the bed or the material handling room and then the uh, LED project. There will be about a million four in there. And uh, Maeve, do you have a sense of what the foundation's um, financial, uh, or what the foundation actually has in its accounts now? Um, actually, I can answer that as well. Okay. There's about three million six, and on those we can only spend the interest. Um, with the 850 or the library investment funds. Those are used on request of what we want to use it for, either programming or if we want to enhance, like um, we're doing the office furniture right now through those funds. Um, that's the difference between the 850 funds and then the MOS and the endowment account. Got it. And if we transfer the 850 to the endowment account, would it limit the 850 use? No, we would still give a request and that account number is not going to change. Um, we just got a uh, checkbook started over there and I just got the check. So we actually are going to spend that checkbook will be just for 850. So we are not going to be transferring any 850 money back down into the foundation's checkbook and then to write the check. So those would still be completely separate. But the ownership would still vest in the foundation. It would be in the foundation, right. And they would give the okay if we could spend the funds or not versus the board of trustees. So Mary Lynn, one and of the things we could, no oh, me. sorry. Go ahead, I'm Mary Lynn. Sorry. I just, just I me, mean, that's a no brainer. We should just do it. Okay. It's crazy to have this separation. I was going to say, I mean, we can, uh, uh, however we decide to let the attorney know, we can have it, like Debbie said right now, the foundation, you only uses the interest generally. Um, we could write up this agreement that if a library administration deemed it necessary, like something happened to the building or something that we could use, you know, the entire amount. They're sort of set up a little bit differently, like when interest accumulates, there's actually a separate fund that that interest is put into, um, and then we know exactly how much we have to spend. Um, and we could keep it all in one pot. I think we're getting into the accounting piece, but we can certainly make sure that the principal is there if, if necessary. But you know, we've had it since 1969. We've never dipped into the principal. So I mean, I think we've been pretty good stewards of that money. The only thing I would say is that once the ownership is transferred to the foundation, as it should be, I think the foundation well, it would have to, 
would have to be an agreement, I, I expect, of some sort. Um, but the foundation would typically control the use and disbursement of funds um, and investment. Um, so uh, if we want to keep these separate in terms of allowing the 850 money to have more flexibility, typically, in my experience, foundation boards never <laughs> They never want to spend any money, you know. They, they they'll, they'll dole out the the interest, you know, typically on a rolling average, but that's about it. And um, so, as long as that's clearly set out and the foundation is okay with those dual accounts, I think it's great. Well, the the, the wonderful this is Maeve, and the wonderful uh, 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 foundation that we have really does want to work well with various groups who really want to support the libraries. So the foundation is actually uh, investing and in helping the friends of Mead Public Library with, with their finances. So they just did that maybe one or two years ago and they've been so pleased that uh, they're getting more than what they used to get from their little checking account interest. Uh, so I think we can yeah. certainly come up with a, a similar agreement that allows this money to be part of the whole but yet separate uh, depending on what the Board of Trustees of the library feel is necessary for um, our library during any given year. But, uh, but you're right, that should all be part of that agreement, which is why um, we think it's in the best interest that we have a lawyer draw up this agreement uh, for us so that it really stipulates what our wishes are. And one other comment is this will also be easier on the city finance department. They will not have to do any accounting into the financials to recognize those funds. So that would be one less thing that uh, the finance department would have to deal with. Well, how, I was just gonna say, how, this is Maeve, how wonderful that a committee actually creates less work for everybody. I've never been part of a committee that can proudly say that. So I would move that we recommend to the uh, board as a whole uh, that we engage a lawyer to draw up paperwork to make this uh, transfer of funds uh, to the uh, to the foundation. Uh, second. second. Maeve, second. <laughs> or Sherry. <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All the opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, we now have item 2-5, discussion and possible action around revisions to the Mead Public Library gift policy. Uh, and I will turn this over to Karen. Yeah, and, and this is sort of uh, works in tandem with the last item on the agenda. Um, our gift policy was passed in 2014 as well. And we, we sort of made a compromise, I think, at that point. I'm trying to remember the whole thread of ideas that we had. But uh, we, if you notice, as some of the lines that we struck out, uh, letter C in that second group, um, we had decided at that point that any of the larger amounts over $100 would go to the foundation and anything less than that would stay at the library. What we're thinking is would again make things simpler, it would be just to strike that language out and to say from this point on uh, all the donations that uh, would go to the foundation and then uh, we can deal with it all as one so to speak rather than having separate accounting for everything. So that's sort of what uh, this policy update gets at. It, it's, it actually simplifies our document quite a bit. Very good. Considering the previous conversation we had, um, we motion to approve the uh, a recommendation. I'm guessing it's still to go through, correct? Um, maybe then, and Garrett? What was that? I, I didn't catch that, Kyle. Sorry, you were choppy there. It's OK. Uh, does this still have to be approved by the full board or is this still Correct. only approved by the finance board? Correct. This would need to be a recommendation of the full board. Okay. I'm seeking a motion to recommend the board adopt the changes to the gift policy as presented. So move. So move. Maeve or? Seconded. <laughs> ML and Maeve. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All the same sign. Motion carried. Uh, item number three, three one is uh, future items for discussion. So this is a little broad. Um, I'll, I'll hand this over to, to Garrett. 
I, I guess uh, we just put this on here each time if uh, board members have some other items they'd like to address at the next meeting, just uh, speak now. I've been making my way through, and I, albeit very slowly, um, and I even bought my own copy of Challenges for the People. And I know we have a lot of other business going on, but maybe we'd want to spend 10 minutes or something just discussing a chapter or something like that. That sounds great. I love that book. <laughs> that works for me. I like that. Yeah, Palaces for the People, I think you're referring to, right? Yep. Okay. Right. Yep. Great. I mean, I think it's so extremely appropriate now um, as we try to figure out what life after the pandemic is going to be like. Mm -hmm. When we get after the pandemic, which eventually we will. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting stuff. I will ensure that's actually on the full board um, agenda then for July. If I think we meet in July and not August, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'll make sure that's on the July agenda. Yeah, I think, um, and I forget what staff person, I forget who it was who had assigned chapters. Yeah, that was Melissa. It was Melissa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe Melissa can go back and we can go back to chapter one. Okay, sure. <laughs> no. Whatever it was she She'll be happy. She uh, has led a lot of discussions with staff on that book as well. So, Mary Lynn, did you want that on the finance agenda, or is that going on the full board agenda? Oh, that would be the full board, I think. Okay. Thanks. And it doesn't have to be. I mean, whenever uh, it's, it certainly doesn't have to be this month, obviously. But sure. Whenever. Sure. Okay. Great. Any other topics for future meetings? Hearing none, uh, item 3-2 is one budget discussion and possible action. I guess, is this, is this Debbie? Yes, um, we're just waiting um, for their final, I guess, marching orders, um, you know, with there being a new city administrator, the parameters have not been uh, discussed with the department heads yet. So versus me doing two budgets and then having to change it, I'm kind of waiting for us to see how the new administrator is going to address the 2021 budget. And then it won't take me long to figure out ours because it's pretty much done anyhow. Okay. Thank you, Debbie. Any, uh, any questions comments for Debbie? Okay. Hearing none. We'll move on to item number four, upcoming meetings. I do have a quick question. Um, we were going to move to a kind of a quarterly meeting, I believe, and this one looks like our next one is July 23rd. Do we want to continue with that in light that we had this one, or do we want to push that out a little bit further? Well, if you want to wait until we have the budget, when we know we have to have it approved for the city, we could push it out. Um, and we could always call a meeting if we have to, if the budget has to be done before August. Okay. What is the, what does it feel the committee? I have, I have okay with either, option, um, but I want to make sure that the committee is all on the same page. This is Maeve, and I think uh, in light of us, you know, coming up with the, the budget season, uh, it might be um, beneficial for the finance committee to meet uh, not on the same day as the board meeting, just so, uh, you know, discussions, questions, and things can be uh, fully uh, explored uh, prior to the actual board meeting in July. And I guess I would suggest August, because July 23rd is, you know, pretty quick, or do you want to just wait until we see a both budget? The only... Uh, I was going to say the one problem with that, Debbie, is I think uh, the full board doesn't normally meet in August right now. So we'll have to kind of figure that out once we do get our marching orders, how to make this work better. You know, as far as uh, days in the past, the budgets were submitted so much earlier than now. Maybe August isn't the right month to take off for the board. I don't know. We'll have to readjust that because normally our budget was passed in like June, I think, the last few years. So. So let's continue on right now planning for a July 23rd meeting, but expect some communications from Debbie 
or, or Sydney to see if they were going to do that, uh, given kind of the fluidity around the timeline of the budget. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, this is this is Maeve again. I, you know, prior to the pandemic, we had attempted to do a uh, joint finance committee meeting, and uh, and and, and in, <laughs> in, in, uh, with the city and uh, with um, uh, the the intent of that over the years was to kind of have a conversation about the budget. What were the needs of the library in order to fulfill its mission? Uh, so I think. Whenever we do put something together, it might be an opportunity for um, us to have uh, a joint meeting with the Common Council Finance Committee, you know, prior to them actually voting on the budget in the fall. I agree. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. So will we hear, maybe is that, are you the one that coordinates that with the city council or is that something that we work through with ML or? Uh, usually well, when, about if we... oh. uh, this is Maeve. Oh, uh, this is Maeve and usually what happens is uh, uh, Garrett and I try to coordinate with the uh, head of finance and the city administrator for a, a date and time that seems to work well with both committees. Uh, so that's how we've attempted. It's certainly more challenged with this pandemic that we're in, but um, you know, it might be something that we can do a little bit later this summer. Very good. Okay. With that, we'll move on to item five, uh, five one, a motion to adjourn. I'm seeking a motion to adjourn the finance committee. So moved. So moved. Second. <laughs> uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Carl. Bye. 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 Bye.